Welcome to the Orange Line Cooking Show. I'm Maya. And I'm Tegan. Today we're going to be making delicious chocolate chip peanut butter gluten-free brownies. Tegan, tell us what the unique thing about these brownies are. Aside from the gluten-free? I mean, are they good? Do they fall apart? I, what I find about them is they actually hold together really well, unlike a lot of gluten-free products. Uh, we'll post the actual recipe later, but we have some peanut butter. We've chosen chunky peanut butter because we like that chewy and a little extra of brownies. Uh, we have eight ounces of chocolate that has been melted. Uh, we have a cup of sugar. It's white sugar, but you may choose to use dark brown sugar simply because it's more moist. We have some baking soda. Some white rice flour. White rice flour is one of the many very common gluten-free baking flours that you can get at your Whole Foods, a health store, or even an Indian grocery store, or an Asian grocery store. Very inexpensive at the latter two. We also have some arrowroot starch. Again, you can find these things very cheaply at Indian or Asian grocery stores. Continue. Uh, we would normally have two eggs, but at the moment we only have one, so it's an egg and about a tablespoon of mayonnaise. I ran out of eggs, so we used ma we're used we using mayonnaise in lieu of one egg. Adds the same amount of moisture. Yep. Uh, the reason, ladies and gentlemen, is that I have chosen to use unflavored gelatin is because this adds a stretchy um, property to the brownies. Elasticity. Elasticity. Thank you, Tegan. No problem. Um, we also have a little bit of xanthan gum. So xanthan gum and flavored gelatin together work to... Unflavored gelatin. Unflavored gelatin work together to create that nice elasticity. Your brownies will be stretchy, you can dip them in milk, and they won't fall apart. We also have some butter. Just salted regular butter. And a little bit of vanilla for flavoring. Just a little bit. Never hurts. Alright, Tegan, so what's the first step? Well, this is pretty simple. It's mostly just throw it all together. No separate bowls needed. And we have our trusty whisk. And a spoon. Okay, so first step is one fourth of a cup of peanut butter. Thank you. And we have our eight ounces of chocolate. Again, this is pre-melted. Make sure that's all nice and melted and even and consistent. Okay, just pour that in. Tegan, I'm going to let you take over that. Alrighty. While Tegan is scooping in the chocolate, I'm just going to give you a quick little note. You have your rice flour and a we have one fourth cup of rice flour and one eighth of arrowroot starch. I've chosen arrowroot starch. <laughs> Most important thing about it's the a matter of preference, folks. So that is very true. Most important thing about your gluten-free flours is to mix them before you put them into the recipe. If you sift them up properly, this guarantees. Well. Thank you very much. This makes sure that you're not going to have any weird tastes. Or any lumps in, in your batter. Unevenly distributed. So that's going to save your brownies from taste. Just to make sure that they're extra delicious. Let's add the xanthan gum. And the gelatin. This is the gelatin. Now, some people decide that they need to put the gelatin over a little bit of water so it has a chance to gel. I don't. I let that happen when everything is added together. All right, Tegan, how are we doing here? Yeah, we've got pretty much all of the wet stuff combined. Just awesome. throw in that little bit of vanilla. Great. I'm going to add the flour. Are you ready for it? I am ready for it. I'm going to add the flour a little bit at a time. It's a lot easier to control the batter from slipping and spattering everywhere. It also allows, again, just all the ingredients to come together really nicely. It's properly meld. Notice, ladies and gents, that I have not melted my butter to a liquid form. For brownies especially, you do want to keep your butter in sort of a putty form. So that's what keeps, allows the brownies to be squishy and soft. We also need to add the sugar. Yep. Add the rest of the flour. I hear that sugar is very important for brownies. Sugar is extremely important. We've actually decided to use unsweetened Baker Squares chocolates. I have actually made this recipe with chocolate chips, semi-sweet chocolate chips. You can use anything too to sweeten it. Um, you can also use 
white chocolate morsels if you like, really doesn't matter. You could also at this stage perhaps add some nuts or even some more chocolate chips just for... I've also care. done this, I've also used uh, chocolate cocoa mix for hot chocolate for chocolate flavoring and a little bit of sweetening. So really it's very, very customizable. Oh tea, and that looks wonderful. I really want to eat this. Oh, this is very exciting. Okay, Tegan, I think we're ready to put it in the pan. All right. Okay. We have pre-greased our pan, just for makes it easier to get the brownies out afterwards. This is a metal pan. It's about one inch in depth. It's square. Uh, okay. Just make sure to add your baking soda, otherwise your brownies won't rise. Here, that's important. Get that nice and mixed in. Oh, these brownies look amazing. I almost just want to eat the whole bowl. Oh, and, and so do I, but we would be really sick, so <laughs> we won't do that. All no. right, are we ready to scoop it all in? We are ready. I think we are, okay? At this point, you may choose to use a flat knife or a spatula to help you scoop that in, but it's really not necessary, so. Now our oven is preheated at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And depending my, I have a gas oven, so your oven might be a little bit different, but generally I find that these brownies take anywhere from 35 to about even 40 minutes to really bake fully until when you insert a toothpick or a knife and you take it back out, there's no wet batter. Okay, so we're gonna evenly distribute that throughout the pan, making sure it's not too terribly tall or higher at any one spot. You might find that you have little clumps of butter. Don't worry about it, it's gonna melt right into the brownies. That just looks so tasty, man. It looks so amazing. All right, I think we're ready to put that in the oven, Megan. What do you think? That looks ready to go in the oven to me. Great, we'll check back with you in a little bit and we'll show you our finished product. Thanks for watching, we'll be right back. Yes. And we're back with Orange Line Cooking. Take it away, girls. Hi, welcome back to Orange Line Cooking. I'm Maya. And I'm Tegan. And we have here some beautiful chocolate chip peanut butter gluten-free brownies. Tegan, let's cut it. Let's. <laughs> okay, here we go. I'm going to take a corner piece. We'll just slice Yeah, just it. slice it across. Oh, look at how nice and crumbly yeah, that looks. Yeah, and I think you should just be able to whittle it with a fork, and it should just be able to slide out. Oh, look at that. Look at that. All right. Well, let's, there you go. Get yourself a piece. I certainly don't want to try this without you. No, no, certainly not. Although, I'm so excited about this that I'm going to prep a, a, a little bite. Oh, please do. Oh, well, look, and you can, you can see that there's the, the peanuts in there from the peanut mm -hmm. butter. Oh, it is so good. Oh my god. That's delicious. Oh my god, that is amazing. Well, there you have it. Thank you very much for joining us for... Orange Line Cooking <laughs> with Maya and Tegan. We'll see you next time. And happy baking. Bye. Hey, hey save some for me. <laughs> oh my god, this is really amazing. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh yeah.